future of cities. What's the tipping point for your vision right now? Is it oil? Is it are we here? But is there something that you feel is sort of the going to either rouse us from our inertia or really going to be the, the moment at which we start to make some significant changes? Are we there? I mean, or it doesn't have to be one, but I want to get a sense of when your vision really starts to play out. When do we start to pay more attention to the railroads that don't involve high-speed technology? I, I don't know that we are, and you know, um, I, I have to reiterate that life is tragic. What will it take? Life is tragic, and sometimes uh, uh, history is cruel, and uh, sometimes things don't work out the way we want. Um, what I do think, the, what I would urge you to pay attention to is how uh, the, the economic crisis is, it has already morphed into a political crisis that could get a lot worse. Um, I personally think that we're, we're in for a period of political uh, uh, disorder. And then by that I don't mean people running around in the streets, wild in the streets. I mean, you know, uh, a very unsettled period. Um, and and uh, that, could, that could mean a wide spectrum of things. Right now, um, I tend to, to compare the current situation to uh, America in the 1850s. It's not exactly the same, you know, history doesn't repeat, it rhymes. But what you saw in the 1850s were political parties that failed institutionally and vanished because they didn't stand for anything. And I think you're seeing the same process now with the Democratic Party that you and I'm a registered Democrat who voted for Obama, by the way. You're seeing the same process with the Democratic Party that occurred with the Whigs in 1856. You know, they don't really stand for anything anymore, and they vanish. Uh, the Republican Party is not doing a whole lot better, and I, they're in trouble too. Uh, Isn't the problem that they stand too much for two different things and can't find the middle? Well, that appears to be the case, but I think it's more a matter that they don't really stand for anything that's reality-based. And it's, you know, because the delusional thinking rises in uh, the, same, the same way as the social distress, you get further and further away from the point where you're capable of, of dealing with reality. So, the bottom line for me is this, you know, I, I think that the... I think that the American public is going to be dragged, kicking and screaming into the future. That it is a conceit to keep on repeating the idea that we, that we are so much in control of what's happening to us and that we can, you know, this is part of the narcissism of our time. That we actually think that, there's, uh, that there are great arrays of solutions to all of the woes and problems that we face. Actually, what we need to do in my opinion, is to be resolute and understand that the time for being crybabies is over. We okay. can't afford Can to be crybabies in there. Uh, I mean, your question, like, what will it take? That is actually the one that really scares me. Because in a sense, I think we've sort of hit a bunch of what will it take moments, and I don't know that we've uh, done very well. I thought Hurricane Katrina would be a what will it take. It showed us unprepared, it showed our lack of capacity about dealing with infrastructure, it showed our inability to do city planning, you know, it showed a lot of things that aren't just about Louisiana and New Orleans. Uh, and we've had a few others. In a sense, how have we done 10 years after 9-11 on a lot of ways suggests that we take our we're, in, uh, the yeah, we're in a little bit deep trouble. And it's partly because when you say what is the tipping point, I guess I ask what is the elements of the tipping point. And so while Jim is going to the 1850s, I realize I've been thinking about some combination of the Gilded Age and the run-up to World War I. The Gilded Age meaning, you know, maybe we'll simply continue down this path of this kind of orange, you know, with you know extremely powerful interests running our country the sort of orgy of wealth at the top and nothing, you know, going on at the bottom. Uh, then the World War II run-up was like, we were seeing for years before, I mean World War I, World War I happened, we saw all these shifting alliances, the world was actually rapidly changing politically, but the leadership of that era couldn't deal, was not, in fact, was dealing with irrelevancies and uh, had a sense of its own grandeur, not like a gym. That made it impossible for them to see what was going on. Now, the, the what's going on in the Middle East might be a tipping point. 
what goes on with resource scarcities, you know, food potential for food riots becoming more widespread. That could be some sort of tipping point. Uh, some combination, you know, uh, political gridlock that becomes a kind of toxic inertia in America and Europe. I mean, Europe is not doing a very good job of resolving these debt issues. I mean, Greece should not be, you know, the harbinger of economic catastrophe that it kind of looks at times today. So uh, part of it, I think we have to be very aware and very, we have to be eyeballing what are these tipping point issues and what's driving them. And it, they're usually combinations of things. Okay, is there questions? Uh, go ahead. Project. I don't know. Yeah, like, uh, it just seemed 